So there has been an uncertainty in practice with regard to the transitional status and treatment of shares under the Companies Act, with a number of questions being raised in this regard. To issue any shares, a company must first ensure that its memorandum of incorporation sets out the classes of shares and the number of shares each class that a company is authorized to issue. In addition, in respect of each class of shares, the MOI of a company must set out the preferences, rights, limitations, and other terms associated with a class of shares. The number of authorized shares of each class and the preferences, rights, limitations, and other terms associated with a class of shares may only be charged by an amendment of the MOI by a resolution of the board of the company who may increase or decrease the number of authorized shares of any classes or reclassify any classified shares. That is, amend the terms attached to such shares that have been authorized but not issued unless the memorandum provides for a different approval process and may only be changed by a special resolution if any of the shares in a specific class have already been issued. So it is important to note that where is the general practice under the Companies Act of 61 of 1973, the old Companies Act, was to reflect the terms of certain classes of shares in subscription agreements or other documents separate from the old Articles of Association, especially when issuing preference shares or funding for funding purposes in the Companies Act now requires that all preferences, rights, limitations and other terms associated with a class of shares must be contained in the Memorandum of Incorporation, failing which they may not be enforceable. It is also critical to ensure that the terms of the same class of shares are indeed the same. For example, if a company issues shares to its shareholders of the same class, say ordinary shares but provides in the memorandum of incorporation or the shareholders agreement which we also have a video of that one shareholder will have more voting rights than another shareholder or greater rights as regards dividends notwithstanding equal shareholding the shareholders in fact hold different classes of shares and the companies required under the companies act to name the classes of shares differently so share certificates are sent out when shares are granted and made available to new shareholders at the time of incorporation and or after incorporation or when ownership of existing shares is transferred from one individual to another after company formation. Shareholders are required to receive a share certificate right after they buy at least one share. A copy of all issued share certificates must be kept by businesses for their records. The CIPC does not keep any record of the shareholders, neither the issued shares. Therefore, share certificates must be drawn up by the company itself, although such is not mandatory in terms of the new company act. So a share certificate validates that on a specific date, a person is the certified share owner in a company with regards to the old companies act it is deemed prima facie evidence prima facie means that it is enough evidence except the country is publicized in scotland of the member share ownership in the company on the other hand whilst a share certificate may be given by a company it is a pass in the members register that offers legal confirmation of share rights in the company whenever trading with share certificates Thus, it is essential to also refer to the member's register to ensure the two are reliable. What are the information details that are shown on a share certificate? So the information that owes to be added as part of a share certificate template includes the name and registered number of the company, a distinct share certificate number, and listed office address of the company, the shareholder's name, the share class or type, and the shareholder's address. Also, the quantity of shares the share certificate covers. 
the degree to which the shares are paid up. Normally, shares are paid up fully. The ideal share certificate template should provide the following. A share certificate needs to be signed by two company directors, a director and the company's secretary. In the event that the company has no company secretary, but single director, then the company director in the presence of an eyewitness who confirms their signature. Every share certificate must be dated on issuing of the share. When should a share certificate be issued? Subject to any condition. Subject to any condition. To the contrary, in the company's articles of association, there exists a legal time limit for allotting a share certificate. After your primary enlistment, company share certificates should be issued to subscribers within two months. Generally, this is carried out as part of the first board meeting. Thereafter, a company have or thereafter a company have to within two months of share issuance allot the share certificate that represents those shares. In the same two or the same two month time limit apply subsequent to any share transfer. Even though share certificates need to be issued to the enlisted holder, you are, you are not under any condition to forward a copy of the share certificate to the CIPC. Any other rules for allotting share certificates are that just like with other areas of company management prior to issuing share certificates, it is important to check the company's memorandum of incorporation. The benchmark practice is for any business to allot a single share certificate in respect of all shares allotted at a specific time. Even though a shareholder can ask for the split share certificate, the major case where above one share certificate will be necessary is when certificates represent holdings in more than one share class. Even though they are owned by the same shareholder, you will have to issue a different share certificate for the shares in every class. For a mutual shareholding, whilst it is good to add the name of every individual holder of the certificate, only one address of the initial named holder must be shown. In addition, you only need to allot a share certificate for a mutual shareholding. With the certificate forwarded to the initial named subscriber instead of a separate certificate to every mutual shareholder. A typical share certificate is a rectangular document set out in landscape orientation. It states the dates of the issue and all relevant details that pertain to the shares that have been taken on a, or a certain date by a particular shareholder. Share certificates can be issued in an electronic format as a PDF file, however, several individuals prefer to receive traditional printed certificates. Both formats can be requested upon company formation. If a shareholder loses their share certificate or it is significantly damaged, the company can grant another. Damaged certificates must be returned to the company to be destroyed. In large companies, the shareholder may be required to prove his or her identity before receiving a replacement certificate except to the extent that a company's memorandum of incorporation provides otherwise, directors are authorized to issue the shares of a company provided that the shares issued have been authorized by or in terms of a company's memorandum of incorporation. And such shares are within the classes authorized and adequate consideration is received by the company for such shares. Generally speaking, issuing shares in a company is a simple process that all that all that is required is for the directors to pass a resolution authorizing the company to issue the shares to a particular individual or juristic person subject, of course, to specific requirements in the memorandum of incorporation or shareholders agreement. 
This is different from the old Companies Act as the old Act always required a shareholder's resolution for the issue of additional shares to protect shareholders against dilution. The Companies Act now only requires the approval of shareholders by special resolution in exceptional circumstances, namely where a company intends on issuing shares to a director or prescribed officer of that company or a person related or interrelated to that company or director or prescribed officer, or if the shares to be issued will constitute 30% or more of the voting right in that specific class, a special resolution will also be required. Minority shareholders may therefore wish to negotiate better protection with regards to the issue of shares in the Memorandum of Incorporation to prevent the board from diluting the minority without having to seek the minority's approval. And that's it for the Certificate of Shares. Or ordinary shares. If you guys found this video interesting, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, click on the bell button for post notifications.